It's that time of year again, tax time. And we had a good discussion on Twitter Spaces yesterday about what everyone in the Web3 and NFT communities need to pay attention to when calculating and reporting taxable income and paying taxes on short and long-term gains. I'd like to give a big thank you to David Bianchi and Tal Navarro for putting on the show, and also to attorney Ira Rothkin and Manisha, a CPA out of Canada, for sharing their thoughts and expertise. Because of the huge interest and all the feedback in this particular Twitter spaces, I'd like to recap a few things we discussed in this audio. Now, before I dive any further into this presentation, let me remind everyone that while I'm a California trial lawyer with 35 years of extensive litigation and business startup experience, and someone who is very interested in the Web3 space, no legal, financial, or tax opinions or advice is being shared or given in this audio. Everything that I share is for informational purposes only. I'm not a registered investment, tax, or legal advisor in the financial investment and tax spaces. Trading any crypto-related and Web3-related blockchain asset, including non-fungible tokens, can be extremely risky and could result in significant capital losses and unexpected tax liabilities. Okay, let's get started. Cryptocurrencies, including non-fungible tokens, NFTs, continue to be treated as property for the purposes of tax in the United States. This was originally decided by the IRS in a notice published in 2014 and means that a majority of taxable actions involving digital assets will incur short or long-term capital gains tax treatment similar to how stocks are taxed. Cryptocurrency transactions received or relating to select activities may be treated as income and therefore subject to income tax. So the question we got during our Twitter spaces is, when do you have to worry about capital gains taxes, especially when engaging in cryptocurrencies and NFTs? The answer we shared yesterday and the answer I'm sharing in today's audio revolve around the following four events. These events include number one, selling cryptocurrency for fiat. Now what's fiat? Well, fiat money is a type of money that is not backed by any commodity such as gold or silver and typically declared by a decree from the government to be legal tender. Most of you know fiat as US dollars, Japanese yen, and other national currencies. So when you sell cryptocurrency for fiat, that triggers a possible taxable event. All right, number two, sending cryptocurrency as a gift may trigger a taxable event. Depending on the amount of the gift and depending on what year the gift was made and the taxes are being reported, these things will dictate what dollar amounts constitute a taxable gift. Number three, purchasing goods and services with cryptocurrency, even small purchases like buying a cup of coffee, can trigger a reportable taxable event. And number four, trading or swapping one digital asset for another. This includes purchasing NFTs using cryptocurrencies. When any of these four events happen, the possibility of triggering an event that results in capital gains or losses needs to be recorded and reported. How about taxes on NFT airdrops? What happens if you're airdropped a token or another type of NFT? Now, this is a scenario with very little guidance as of today's recording from the IRS. Based on precedent, airdrops will probably be taxed as ordinary income, for example, short-term capital gains, generally when the assets are recorded on ledger and or enter your wallet. Now, when you sell the airdrop, it'll be subject to capital gains tax rates. If someone airdropped you a token or an NFT that you didn't ask for or you were not expecting, it may qualify as a gift, and we'll talk about that a little later in this show. Now, what happens if you're the victim of a rug pull? What happens if you now have NFTs that are basically worthless that you use cryptocurrency to buy, let's just say as an investment? Well, according to the IRS, rug pulls aren't technically considered thefts or scams, 
So there's no direct rule that helps NFT owners. If you think about it for a second, uh, some rug pulls are obviously criminal fraud, and there are already rug pulls highly publicized that are being criminally prosecuted. In other situations, the rug pull may have more to do with a company. It wasn't set up properly. It's not able to generate revenue to meet its expenses, or maybe something else has happened in good faith and at arm's length. So depending on the type of rug pull that you experienced, dictates how the IRS will look at losses associated with that event. One thing I've heard CPAs tell clients is that if you are the victim of a rug pull and the value of your NFT substantially drops or goes to zero, you may want to try to legitimately sell that NFT for zero ETH on OpenSea or another platform. And if you're successful, this may allow you to record a loss that offsets your other capital gains for the year. The caveat to all of this is that you don't want to create a false transaction. For example, selling an NFT to one of your friends to try to show a loss for tax purposes, because if you do so in a misleading transaction, you may very well be committing tax fraud, and we don't want that to happen. So. Make sure that if you do try to sell your NFT after a rug pull for zero ETH, you're doing so in a legitimate business transaction, and that way you can stay clear of any tax fraud allegations. Let's talk about gas fees for a second. Are you able to deduct them? Are you able to include your gas fees in the analysis of profits and losses when reporting your taxes? And the answer is yes, you can. Just like commission fees when buying and selling stocks, your crypto gas fees, gas fees associated with NFTs, are expenses that get added to the cost of your transaction. And discussing this with your accountant or CPA, you should be able to include these expenses in your tax accounting approach to offset your profits by deducting the expenses. It may depend on whether or not your engaging in Web3 transactions as an individual, as a corporation, as a limited liability company, because different tax rules and regulations apply depending on the status, that being an individual or legal entity at the time of the transaction. Now, we talked earlier about airdrops, and I mentioned gifts. And the question we had yesterday is, are you required to pay taxes on NFTs that you're gifted? And generally speaking, when you receive a gift, it's not a taxable event. However, and this is something that everyone needs to pay attention to, the donor of that gift, the person who made that gift, will likely owe a gift tax if the value of that gift, I believe, is above $16,000. You can check that number independently. And the person making the gift, the donor, may also be required to file IRS Form 709 associated with the gift tax. Now, if you received a gift, keep in mind that when you sell it, whether it's cryptocurrency, an NFT, or some other Web3 asset, you will owe a capital gains tax if you sold it at a profit, and your cost basis will be the price at which the original buyer purchased the digital asset. So it's a good idea to keep track of all of these numbers as they happen in real time. So at the end of the year, when you sit down with your accountant or your CPA and you go back through all of these transactions, everything is clear and concise. There's one more thing I'd like to talk about that I think is relevant to Web3 transactions, to cryptocurrency and NFTs, to what we're seeing in the space, and that has to do with internet sales tax. So what's internet sales tax? Well, it's the tax attached to the selling of a product or service from an online retailer or e-commerce business owner. The tax is levied by the state where the product or service is sold rather than by the state in which the business is located. And I believe this includes Web3 assets like NFTs. So if you're in California and you sell your NFT to someone that resides in another state, on the other side of the country, do you need to collect sales tax relative to that transaction? Different professionals have different views, but I believe the answer may be yes because of a 2018 Supreme Court ruling in the South Dakota versus Wayfair Inc. 
case. The Wayfair decision says that states can require that out-of-state online sellers collect and remit sales tax regardless of whether or not the retailer had a physical presence in that state. Now, because of the ruling, several states now have some form of law in place requiring internet sellers to collect and submit sales tax. And listen, with the popularity of Web3, many of us expect to see more states doing the same thing soon. Web3 is exciting. I'm all in. Doing business online presents all of us with new opportunities. Now, having said that, you need to pay attention to established business and tax reporting requirements and use the existing tax code along with established legal entities like corporations and limited liability companies to minimize tax liabilities and penalties and maximize your end of year profits. My name is Mitch Jackson. I'm a California lawyer. I'm all in when it comes to Web3, blockchain, smart contracts, non-fungible tokens, DAOs, and of course, the metaverse. If you have questions, I'm here for you. All you need to do is reach out at MitchJackson.com. Take care, be safe, and never stop making each day your masterpiece.